This is going to be so much fun to edit. Hello there and welcome back to another video on my channel How Are We Doing Today? Today I'm going to be reviewing the Lakeland Smart Touch Induction Hob and the Sage Smart Oven Pro. So let's -a go! As a quick disclaimer, both of my dogs are down here and fast asleep just behind the camera, so in case you hear background noise during this, and my mother's also here with me, so in case you hear background noise during the making of this video, that is what it will be. I have to say this for every video, but I'm going to continue because they always are down here with me. So, I bought both of these around Christmas Day. No, it was after the Boxing Day sales because I wanted to try and get them, they're both a bit pricey. So I wanted to get them as cheap as possible and I knew which ones I wanted. The hob wasn't in the sale but it was only £100 which is quite good. And then I got the oven which I think had £50 off, maybe £100 off. So I'm really happy with that. The hob took overnight to get to me but I paid for next day delivery so that works. But the oven was on back order so that took about what 10 days to get to me. The reason I got the hob was because I hate having to steal my grandmother's. I do a lot of test baking, a lot of test cooking, and I'm always in my grandmother's way and my uncle's way and my mother's way, no matter how hard I try not to be. And I hate that feeling of being in people's way. So this I can put down here. And as it's actually lack of space down here, this seems, although it seems a bit hefty, that's what it needs for its job. But it is just a single hob and it has loads of extra presets on it so far as I understand. So I'm really excited. I want to move more into drinks making and cooking so this was the perfect thing that I needed to be able to do that. So now let's open it. The packaging actually seems a bit thin if I'm honest but I'm sure it worked well. Hold on. Let me get the scissors out. There we go. Oh, there's styrofoam in here. That's why it's packaging on the outside. Hold on. Can you get this thing out? Well, that's a lot, isn't it? It's <laughs> a lot of styrofoam. Oh, wow. It comes with a box inside it. Anything else in there? No. So, this is it. This is how it looks. This is not how it looked when I had a look at it in the shop right enough. And I love the packaging. I think it's sleek. I think it's smart. I particularly like this slot here because that just shows what you can do with it. So what does it say? Lakeland Smart Touch Induction Hob. Super sleek, energy efficient, ultra modern induction hob with six preset cooking modes and manual controls. You can see some of them here, but I oh, you can see some of them here, but I will get it out for you and show you. So can I just open it? Ooh. Even more styrofoam, yay! By the way, I am going to show you me using it later on. I just wanted to do the unboxing in front of you. Let's get all of this stuff out of the way. I do like the box though. I might keep that. How long's the lead? Oh, the lead's a good length. I need a good length because that, where I'm going to be doing it, the height of the cupboard's quite long, so I need a long lead for it. Let's open this up. Does it have just a sneak open? Oh, it does. Oh. Plastic instructions. I'm gonna leave the plastic on the wire for the moment. Oh, it's so nice and clean. Ooh, not been used or anything. It's great. Please do not touch the hot surface after cooking. Funny that. So this is it. It's about the size of my torso, which is good sizing. It's very thin actually which I was surprised very thin actually it's got little feet which helps keep it steady what are the presets hot pot pan fry stir fry simmer boil keep warm and then it's got different temperatures the temperature dial is this little thing here it's all touch by the way it's I think I said that it's all touch induction which is really good I don't know if I'm actually going to use it in terms of specific modes i think i'm just going to turn it on and turn the temperature up but i haven't used it so i won't know if i'll be able to do that until i give it a go so i will see you later when i demonstrate using it 
So now moving on to the tabletop oven. I got this for basically the same reasons as I did the hob. I'm constantly in my grandmother's way and there's a lack of space down here so it had to be of a certain size, it couldn't be huge. But the main reason above everything else is that I'm constantly baking, that is my staple, that is what I absolutely love to do. And with this I can now do it every single day without worry of being in people's way as I said before. So. You know, this is excellent. So let's get it open. Don't know really, gosh, how I'm gonna do this. Oh, Magic's come to join us by the way, so make sure you say hi. Here we go. Oh, wow. Again, ooh, I'm just gonna keep falling over. Again, the cardboard box on the outside is quite flimsy in a way, but very, it feels flim flimsy, but it's quite thick actually. Just pop them there. There we go. And now I've somehow got to get the box out of this to show you the inside box, although you can see the top of it. Not very well though. So give me one minute. I, uh, so this is the only way really I can show it to you because everything else hasn't worked. I can't change the tripod and everything else. So this is the box. It shows you that it can grill toast and bake which is exactly what I need and then it tells you about all of the buttons and all of the inside stuff and how it's got like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten different functions on it again I'm going to try with the hob and I'm going to try with this just turning it on and see if I can set the temperature to what I want I mean if I'm baking I can just set it constantly to baking and that should be perfect but I do want to know if it just has an on off function if you can just turn it on and do it, or turn it off and do it, that makes no sense. Anyway, right, I'm breaking. Okay, so I can at least open this bit for you. So let's get this. Come on, Tabs. There we go. Open up. Oh my gosh. It's got all this in it. It's got a pig in design format in it. Right. Hopefully not hitting the camera. Oh, I was so close to hitting the camera. Okay. Oh, okay. Instruction manual, I think. Something like that. Instruction manual. And then a... Oh, looks like a cookie sheet. How interesting. A grill. And then... Oh, this must be for the, start, for the pizza function. And now it's time to get the oven actually out of this. So I will see you in a second because... It just takes too long, so give me five minutes and I'll be right back with you. So this is it actually out of the box. It's a lot, lot smaller than I thought it would be. Very small, but let's get the plastic off. I have to say, to survive the journeys and the opening strategies I've had to use to get these out, it's very well packaged. The cable isn't very long which isn't great, but it doesn't have to actually sit on my cooking table when I'm cooking something. It can sit further away and then just be plugged into an extension, which would be good. Oh no, it's a bit longer than I thought it would be. That's fine. So let's take a, oh goodness, I'm falling. Right, so I've got an instruction manual, a baking tray by the look of it, a pizza baking tray, gonna go with that a grill section what looks like a cookie sheet and I'm gonna go with cookie sheet unless that's the bottom of the oven which I won't know until I open it anyway and another grilling option so let's have a look at the front so what does it say auto eject rack open door slowly hot surfaces do not touch great it can roast pizza bake and slow cook so these are all the dials that's where the function thingy goes that must be defrost then. So this is the temperature. Oh, I can turn it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. That's useful for if I do American recipes. The light on and off, I wonder what that's for. And then it's got all of these different functions here. Oh, that looks great. Right, so let's remove this, which is one of the most satisfying parts of the entire thing. Oh, that felt good. And open the door. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm gonna need to set this up i suppose let's have a look at the instructions where are they of course they're right on the bottom good cool bix preparing the oven 
Remove and safely seal, discard any packaging, material, promotional labels and tape from the oven. Right. So I need to remove this. Oh, that was so satisfying as well. And then I'll do the plug when I'm about to plug it in. Again, I will show you how to do this because I am making some scones today. So I will be able to test bake them in this and show you how it goes then. Right, I've lowered myself because it was gonna do my back in otherwise. So let's have a look at the next bit. Remove the crumb tray. Which one's the crumb tray? J. Crumb tray, so that's got to be this. So what does it say? Remove the crumb tray, wire rack, grilling rack, roasting pan and pizza pan from the polyform packaging. Wash them with soft sponge in soapy, in warm soapy water, then rinse and dry thoroughly. Well, let's just get them open to start with. So, one crumb tray, one grilling rack, I think that is. One wire rack, which is this thing. One... 30 centimetre non-stick pizza tray. That's interesting. So I like making pizzas. And it saves me having to get a pizza oven. Which is one thing I do want to get in the future. What's this final thing? So this must be the roasting pan. Place the oven on a flat, dry surface. Ensure there is a minimum distance of 10 centimetres of space on both sides of the appliance and 15 centimetres above. do insert the crumb tray into the oven now i am going to wash these i promise i just want to keep it all together as much as possible and, uh, and stop stopping and starting this video which i can feel is just going to keep happening so let's get that how do we insert this into the oven great instructions oh it's magnetic how interesting is this, is this the way it's meant to go it doesn't tell you how you're supposed to put it in how the heck is this meant to go in oh there it goes underneath see, see I'm, I'm learning i'm learning with it guys i tell you unwind the power cord completely insert the power into a grounded power outlet the oven alert will sound oh actually i will do this when i turn it on now I'm not going to lie to you, it is a couple of weeks later, some things just went wrong on the last video so I'm actually filling it in here with a different test bake which actually combined using the hob and the oven in one go so I'm just going to put that all together. I've got everything ready for when I turn the hob on but I haven't actually tested it or turned the instructions, turn the instructions on, use the instructions so we're just going to have a look at that and see how it works. Possibly not a good idea to put that on plas uh, plastic on the hob so let's just move that down there out of my way. What does it say? Right, turning the hob on and off. Place the pan with food on the hob. Right, okay. Turn the hob on by pressing the hold, pressing and holding on off button. Right, so let's plug this in. Undo the coil. Love what you're doing. So turning this on, place, place the pan with food on the hob. Right. Because I'm not using it straight away, I'm not going to do that. So let me place this over here out of the way slightly. Hopefully I won't knock it off in the meantime. Turn the hob on. Okay, so I should turn it on with the plug. Oh gosh, okay. Turn the hob on by pressing and holding the on off. Which I presume is that one. Six red mode, li six red mode lights will blink on and off, which they are, okay. To turn off the hob, press the on off switch. I just want to check that it does that before I get used too used to this. Okay, that does it, okay. The fan will automatically run for a minute to cool the hob. Okay, but I didn't use it for very long, so that's fine. So that's turned back on. Selecting the mode and changing the power temperature. Okay, press mode button with the until the LED light below the mode you require is illuminated. Do I have to do that? I mean, for this I don't really want to. Can I just do it like this? No, okay, so mode. I'm going to pick simmer. 
uh, illuminated on the display. The unit will make a small sound as the electromagnetic, co electromagnetic coil is activated and the magnet grips the pan, starts to heat right. Just place you on. The power temperature can only be changed on the hot pot pan fry and stir settings. Okay. To change the power, can I have my phone? Okay, now I need to look up what I need to be doing on my recipe. So that was bad timing on my part. Uh, heat gently, yes, the simmer is bright. Okay. Change the power temperature, sweeping your finger around. I clicked you, what more do you want? To change the power temperature, sweep your finger around the heat control dial. But I can't change that on that, so that's fine. Red indicator will light, lights will highlight the power and equivalent settings. On the other mode, the power temperature is preset. Right, so I picked that, so do I have to... Okay, so turn it back on. Simmer, lock. Lock? No, timer? Okay, this induction hob has a timer function that allows you to cook for a certain amount of time before switching off. This prevents food boiling dry or burning. To set the temperature, set your dish to cook on the desired mode setting, then press the timer button. The time shown in minutes and the display will show zero zero. Well, it isn't. And the simmer is just doing it. It's just on and offing. To indicate that no time has been uh, so are you heating or not i can't feel any heat am i missing something the hob is programmed to first use medium high power to reach boiling point then automatically decreases for simmering the simmering time is remaining the time is the remaining time shown on the end of the timer end or display the timer is on default automatically set to 120 minutes. You can adjust this timing by pressing the timer button and sweeping your finger around the heat control dial. Right, so why aren't you doing anything? The hob does not recognise that I have placed a pan on. The pan being used is not compatible with the hob. That's not true. It's a flipping hob. What difference does it make? I have completely gone out of my depth with this. Oh, that's in a different language. That's not going to be helpful. I can barely understand English. Turning on the hob with food on the hob. How does that make sense? Do I have to put everything in it before it starts? I mean, it's going to go in there anyway, so I might as well. Hold on. Let's get this lot in here. Follow the instructions on my phone. There's too many instructions for me. I can't do this. Place the butter. Okay. I'm making a golden syrup cake in case anyone's interested, which will be coming up on here and my blog in a couple of weeks. For me, maybe next week for you. I don't know how the timeline's going to go. Place the butter, syrup. Are you still hot? Yeah. Syrup. Okay. And sugars. Just one. Two sugar and heat gently until the ingredients are just melted together, stirring occasionally. Right, so now I'm onto the stage that I actually need things. Place the pan with the food on the hob. Turn the hob on by pressing and holding the on button. The six modes will light and blink on and off, which they are. Okay, selecting the mode and changing the temperature. Press the mode button until the LED below mode okay that's fine that's what i want illuminate on the unit will make small sound as the ele electronic uh, the electronic coil is activated and the magnetic strip grips the pan and starts the heat the power slash temperature can only be controlled on the modes that i'm not using that's fine to change the power i don't care about that on the other modes the power okay No, I want, it's just, is that, is that good enough? Are we going to go with that? Why do you keep turning off?
To set the timer, set your dish to cook on the desired mode setting, then press the timer button. Right. On. Mode. Right. To set the timer, your dish desired to cook, then press the timer button. Okay, timer button has been pressed. The timer is shown in minutes and the display will zero, zero, zero to indicate that no time has been set. Okay, I'm setting a flipping... Love, do not test me. Right, okay. No, I don't want boil. I want simmer. Timer. The hob will wait six seconds after you have set a time. Sweep your finger around the heat di dial. To okay, so one fifty. Let's do that. Why do you keep turning off? Right. I've moved the hob because, quite frankly, if it stayed in front of me, I would break it. I am a little bit angry because. I've bought this product not knowing that I needed to buy specific pans for it to work with and I don't know if there was any indication on buying it, I'm presuming not because hopefully that would be visible for me to understand that that's what I'd need to buy so I'd need to spend even more money than the £100 I had to for that product for it to even work so I've now got to go and buy a pan that will work on that because I don't currently own any and neither does my grandmother. So I've got to spend even more money to make a product work. So if you are considering buying this and eventually when I do get the pan I will show that working for you. But you know this video is just going to take six months to make if I leave that. So I'm going to leave this out and do that demonstration another time or you'll probably see it on video anyway. If you do consider buying this product, or anything apparently, as I've spoken to the customer service people that my mum called for me, if you do buy anything to do with induction, make sure that the pan you buy with it, or you own induction, specific induction pans. Because I've now got to wait. Just not, just not gonna go there, I'm gonna go to my happy place. So instead, what I'm going to do is actually heat that up on my grandmother's hob, so while that's messed me around, I'm actually going to begin setting up my oven instead because hopefully that will provide some, some success for me and for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my frustration because otherwise it wouldn't be worth posting it. So I'm actually going to set up the oven right now so that you can see it and so that I can do all the pre-setting of that because hopefully I'll have one success in this video. So I will see you after that. So I've got that set up now. So let's follow the instructions for it. Quick start, preparing the oven. In the, in order to remove any protective substances, substance, substances on the heating elements, it is necessary to run the oven empty for 15 minutes. Ensure the area is well ventilated as the oven may emit vapours. I may need to open a window, basically. These vapours are safe and not detrimental to the performance of the oven. Remove and safely discard any packaging material, promotional labels and tapes from the oven. That I have done. Check. Remove the crumb tray wire racking. Remove? Oh no, I've done all that, okay. Remove the crumb tray wire rack, grilling rack, roasting pan and pizza pan, which are all here, from the polyform packaging, wash them with a soft span soft sponge in warm soapy water then rinse and dry thoroughly done that wipe the interior of the oven with a soft damp sponge dry thoroughly done that place the oven on a flat dry surface ensure there is a minimum distance of 10 centimeters of space on both sides of the appliance and 15 centimeters above right so this needs to be a bit more central then Uh, 15, well, there's nothing above it, so that's fine. Insert the crumb tray into the oven. Done that. Unwind the cord completely, which I've done, and insert into a power plug. Now, it doesn't say that anything else should be in there. I love that. Did you see that? Push it shut. You open it. It brings it out for you. I think that's great. Let's remove these, because it doesn't say to have these in it. I just needed to put them somewhere safe. 
while I was waiting to do this video. It does just say insert the crumb tray, doesn't it? Insert the crumb tray into the oven, which is this bad boy. Unwind the power cord completely and insert into a power plug. Insert the power plug into a grounded power outlet. Do that. And one. Oh, good. Okay. The oven alert will sound and the LCD screen... LCD? Yeah, LCD screen will illuminate. The function options will appear with an indicator on the bake setting. Yes, they do. Turn the function dial, this one, to the right until the indicator reaches the pizza function. Bake, roast, pizza. Okay. Press the start, cancel button. The button backlit, backlight will illuminate red, the LCD screen will illuminate orange, and the oven will, uh, and the oven alert will sound. Okay, the LCD screen will indicate a blinking preheating, which it is. You see that? No, you can't, but I'm telling you, so it's happening. Once the oven has reached the set temperature, the temperature alert will sound. So I guess I'll catch up back up with you when that happens. Okay, while that's doing that, let's read the next few steps. The LCD screen will indicate and the temp set temperature, the, alert, the temperature alert will sound. Okay, the timer will begin to begin displayed will be displayed and automatically begin to count down so does that mean that it will then count down at 15 minutes i presume so the timer will display and automatically begin to count down at the end of the cooking cycle the oven sound will alert the start cancel button backlight will go out and the lcd screen will illuminate blue the oven is now ready to use so how long do you guys reckon i'll have to wait for this hey so can I just set any old temperature? Yeah, I must be able to, because that's a te temperature dial. Okay. The one thing I don't know about this is if it is a... Oh, it's starting to smell now. And if it is a convention oven or a fan oven, or if it's a both. Because I do my recipes with 180 degrees C on a conventional oven, 160 degrees C on a fan oven, or gas mop 4, or whatever the heck that is. I should know that by now, I've been doing it long enough. But I just don't know. That's in a different language, so that's not going to help me. It's getting warm in here. Well, that must mean that the pizza is the highest setting there is. It's a mirror. It just spat at me. It genuinely just spat at me. Okay. The timer will be displayed and automatically begin to count down. So I'm presuming at any second now, that that's going to go down to a 19. No? Yes? Yes, because it stopped the preheating bit there, so that must go down to 19. So hold on a minute. Well, probably about 30 seconds now. Let's have a look. Are you going to go down, love? I didn't touch it. I didn't do anything to it because I don't know what it's doing. Yes, it's gone down. Right, okay, so that's 19 minutes. So I'm not going to make you sit through 19 minutes of waiting. So instead, what I'm going to do is prepare the cake that I'm actually going to be cooking in this to prove whether it works or not. So I'll see you after that. Bye. Right, okay, so I've got my cake ready. So I just need to look up what I need to set it to. Now, there's been a bit of confusion about what the heck I'm supposed to be cooking this at. So what I'm going to do is follow this person's instructions, presuming it's a conventional oven temperature. So I'm going to put it down to function to bake. Where's the instructions? Thank you. And what does it say? Turn the function dial until the indicator of the LCD scene reaches the desired setting, which is bake, which is what I need. Turn the temperature dial to the left to reduce. Right, I actually need it on 160, which is what it is on, so I'm going to leave it. The bottom figure on the LCD screen indicates the preset cooking time. Whereas I need mine to cook for, what is it, an hour? Yeah. Okay, turn the time dial, which is here. Okay, let's just shift that up to an hour. Okay. Place the food directly on the wire rack or, include, or on the included pizza pan. Right, okay, so I need to put these here. Open you. 
Not you burning me, you big bad idea. Oh, do not fall. Place you back in. Okay, place you in. Okay. And then what does it say? For an hour or until golden on the top. Okay. And a skewer insert inserted a skewer and it comes out keen. Okay, uh, put that put the food on top of the rack. Close the oven door and press start slash cancel. So what I want to know is if this goes down a minute, because if it does, it means that the whole thing's actually started and it doesn't need preheating or anything. Well, it's not saying preheating up there, so I'm presuming that it's working. The timer will be displayed to begin the countdown. The cooking temperature and time will be adjusted during cooking cycle. Okay, what? So for the setting that, f that feature, a preheat cycle, bake, roast, pizza cookies slow cook press the start button before placing food in the oven so hold on All right let's cancel then okay the button backlight will illuminate red the oven alert will sound the lcd screen will indicate the blinking preheating while the oven is heating up when the oven is ready for use the preheating blinking right so i've got to take this out of the oven basically right there's a towel I'm not having a good time on this video, can you guys tell? Okay, so let's take you out. Close you. Shouldn't need you, because that's all done. Okay, so for settings that feature a preheat cycle, bake, roast, yeah, bake, that's all I need to know. Press the start cancel, so it is at 160, which is what I need, and it is going on for an hour. Okay, so start. Okay. The button backlight will be illuminate red. Okay. The oven will alert the sound on the LCD screen. Preheating. Right. When the oven is ready to ready for use, the blinking preheating will go out. The oven alert will sound and the timer will start counting. So, okay. Place the food in the oven. Right. Okay. Quick goes. Quick goes. Open. <coughs> Here we go. Close. Okay. Uh, start counting down. The plate. Place the oven either directly on the wire rack or in that. Ensure the food. Or ensure. Or ensure the food is centered in the oven for most even cooking. Are you in the centre? No. That's it. Close the oven door. The timer will begin to count down. The cooking temperature and time can be adjusted during the cooking cycle. At the end of the cooking cycle, the oven alert... Right, so it's counting down. Okay, so now it's started. At the end of the cooking cycle, the oven alert will sound, the start cancel button backlight will go out and the LCD screen will illuminate blue. Okay, so I guess I will see you in an hour. So that's the time for it. I did actually put it in for another 10 minutes, but I would have to do that with a normal test bake. So I don't think that the cooking temperature and time is too different to what my fan oven would be. So that's actually really pigging useful if i'm honest so i am actually well at, well a conventional oven temperature so i'm just going to take it out i love this ejector bit i'm not going to pretend i think it's great so i'm just going to move that there leave that to cool and try that later turn you off. so how do i turn you off where's my instructions so do i just click the off button to ensure your oven is turned off by pressing the start cancel button on the control panel, the oven is off when the backlight is no longer illuminating. Okay, so what, do I have to hold it down? Well, it doesn't stop illuminating, so I guess I've kind of... 
got to turn it off at the plug. So there we go. Okay, that's that off. Yeah, so that's the end of that. I would say that seeing as when I was doing this, I was really, really confused and frustrated at the fact that it was when I was looking up oven temperatures compared to it, that it was going to be, in my mind, quite difficult to interpret and to get right. It actually works fairly similarly to a conventional oven temperature and time frame, which is really, really good. Overall, I think the oven is a really, really good success. Bear in mind that I was incredibly confused and frustrated with the fact that I didn't know if it was going to work to a conventional oven temperature or even a fan oven temperature. So using that and finding out that that does that this oven does work to a conventional oven setting in terms of time frame and temperature is brilliant because when I was doing the research it was really difficult to try and determine that the hob was a huge fail and I'm not happy about it I'm really really angry about it because now I was looking up while I was waiting for that cake to cook and it's going to cost me easily another 75 pounds in terms of getting a set of hobs sorry a set of pots and pans that will work on the induction hob it's going to cost me even more money so I'm not happy about that one out of two is really good bearing in mind I only thought I was going to get actually I didn't think I was going to get any out of it at one point in the video I was just like I've wasted 300 pounds how the heck am I gonna even get that right again so I'm really happy about getting one right I am really glad with the oven I'm going to keep using it for test bakes and hopefully for videos now that the temperature seems to be working really well and yeah so i'm really really happy with this i hope you have enjoyed this video don't forget to check out all the links in the description as i love them all and wouldn't put them there if i didn't let me know in the comments of anything else you'd like to see me try or look at or buy and test for you guys as this has actually been quite a surreal fun frustrating brilliant experience and finally don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you want to see more and i will see you next time bye